Hey guys, uh, this is Mrs. Mindy, and today we're going to talk about some human traits, both some inherited ones and uh, some acquired ones. So remember, human traits, uh, traits in general, are anything you can observe about an organism. It may not be something that you see, it can be something that you can measure in other ways. Uh, we're going to go through a big list of these, and on some of these you may not have heard of before, and this is one of them. Um, and some people have ear points. It's on the inside of their ear. Probably uh, not too many people have this, or if you have it, um, it may not be super noticeable. But when it is pronounced, it's right here. It's sometimes called Darwin's point, and it's on the inside of of your ear. So you may need somebody to help you see this or uh, maybe turn your head and take a picture on your uh, on your computer so you can see or you may be able to feel it um, like a little cartilage point. I think I can feel it on me more than I can uh, than I can see it because the skin kind of covers it up and it's left over. It's a thing that we have in, in common with animals that have like pointy ears and it's that point. It's, it's like the same structure as that point, but we don't have it anymore. Tongue rolling. So if you can roll your tongue like this man is, um, some people, most people can do it. Some people can't. They just don't have the muscles to do it. So that's a trait that we can measure. Attached earlobes. Okay, so this is another one where you may not have paid attention to this before, but it's about where um, your earlobe attaches to your head. So like this person here, uh, the, the lowest point of the earlobe is where it attaches to the head. Okay. And for some people, that's not true. So this is an attached earlobe. If it's detached, it means that uh, your earlobe attaches to your head and then goes down. And some people are a little bit between these. So it's not 100% like one or the other. But it's a thing you can look at and categorize. Hitchhiker thumb. This is another one where it's um, there's a big variety, a big continuum. So to figure out if you where you are on this continuum, uh, hold up your thumb like you're going to go hitchhiking and bend it back just with your thumb, not with your other hand or anything. Bend it back as far as you can and look at the angle that it makes. Okay, some people can do it almost 90 degrees or like 90 degrees, almost like this. Um, some people can kink it a little bit back. Some people, they really can't go beyond straight. And usually whatever you are, that's what you think is normal. And sometimes it's sort of shocking to see people that are really different because it's not a thing you super notice. Um, you know, it's, it's good for pushing elevator buttons, I guess. Upturned nose. So this is, um, if the tip of your nose is higher than, um, like if you drew a line straight out from your face, like straight out from right here, straight out 90 degrees, is the tip of your nose like 90 degrees out from your face or is it less than 90 degrees? So like, does it tip up like that or does it go straight out? Or some people it goes down, you know, depending on your nose. Okay, so that's like a trait you can look at. It's upturned nose. Left-handed. Are you right-handed or left-handed? It's certainly a distinctive trait, and it may affect a lot of things, but it's not super well understood what causes this. Um, there seems to be not, uh, not a completely genetic component, but it, it's experience. it seems to be that it's an experience of um, how you, uh, what it was like in your mother's womb when you were, before you were born, you know, and it's more common in, I think it's more common in uh, not firstborn children. So that's funny, right? Okay. Anyway, left-handed, right-handed. Freckles. Do you have freckles? Um, freckles, I'm showing pictures of red-haired people because it's more common in red-haired people for some reason. Uh, freckles can fade with age. They can be really pronounced when you're a kid and they go away later. And also people can get more freckles after they're exposed to the sun, just like uh, people who don't have freckles would get a uh, darker skin tone. They get darker freckle tone or more freckles. 
bent pinkies. And this, I'm sorry, this is a blurry picture. This is the most clear one I could find. So this is a thing that is uh, kind of interesting and easy to measure. If you put both your pinkies together, like they are in this picture, and some people's, they go straight together and they touch all the way up to the tip, you know, or almost. And some people, they veer away at this at this knuckle right here. They kind of like go out a little bit. Mine go out a little bit. Um, I should have taken a picture of my pinkies. Anyway, um, so that's just like a variation that people don't usually notice. Hair curliness. And this is interesting because a lot of people are interested in this. Uh, both in the scientific community and, um, you know, people are really concerned about their hair and like want to know about it. But how scientists study this is uh, by looking at the individual hair and it's in the structure of the individual hair. And scientists measure this on this continuum of uh, more curly to less curly. And they're even really tightly curled like here, um, and these are all people, like this is from a study of just people in South Africa. And you can see how the diameter of the curl changes. It can be very small, like super curly. And so you can measure that and have like um, an empirical, I mean, a um, uh, an objective way of, whoops, sorry, an objective way of measuring that and saying like, oh yeah, curliness goes with this. Okay. Um, they also measure if the curl changes direction a lot, like this one, the curl changes direction. And if each uh, hair makes sharp turns or if it's just like round turns, like this one has just kind of rounded turns, but it changes direction quite a bit. This one has some sharp turns in it and it affects like the way that the hair is curly. And so they're trying to find out are there genetics of this? The thing we do know, we don't know all the genes for curliness yet, but we do know that curly hair protects the head from hot sun better than straight hair. So in uh, places where it's hotter, curly hair is more common. Long second toe. So, um, you know, you can take off your sock if you're at home. Don't take off your sock if you're at school uh, to look at your toes. So, but you probably know. So. Um, your toe can be, your second toe here, can be shorter than your big toe and kind of just like in line with the other toes, or it can be as long as the big toe, like in this person, or it can even come out longer and be your longest toe. So that's a uh, human trait that's different among different people. Eye color. Now, eye color is really variable because there are so many things. And in, when we're talking about genetics, we will make take a simplified, much simplified view of eye color and we'll pretend that it's just brown and just blue. And that's sort of true, but there's so much variation in the colors. It's not just one gene that does this, but we're kind of going to pretend that it does because you guys are just starting out as biologists. Um, but people's, you know, that it goes between like eight and about 30 genes that people are looking at to see if they influence eye color. So it's, it's uh, yeah, which you can kind of know because um, there's so many different variables in how people's eyes look. Red, green color blindness. Uh, this is very, a very common mutation. Um, so to about 5% of people, these two pictures look the same where like this orange and this green don't look very different to someone who has red green color blindness. Um, so that's a that is a known genetic trait, and that is uh, just on one gene too. Oh, there's some more. And there's different kinds of uh, red green color blindness too. So this is the full color version, and so then if any one of these look uh, the same, so you can see this person here, it's showing like a little bit. Um, they still have a little bit of red color distinguishing um, from the other colors, but th this person has less, like the, where the red really looks like green. Straight hairline versus widow's peak. Okay, so let's see, this person, this actor, John Travolta, he has a widow's peak. See how it kind of comes down to a point and it goes back. And... Uh, uh, President Obama has a little bit of that too. So if it goes just straight across and doesn't come forward, 
Um, you'd have a straight hairline. If it comes down a little bit to a point, you'd have a widow's peak. And this gets confused because sometimes if men are older, they can get a uh, male pattern baldness that starts like right here. And so it accentuates that more. Chin dimple, here's John Travolta again. Um, so if you have a chin dimple right there, like in the middle of your chin, and it may not be as pronounced as this, but if it just kind of goes in, that would count as a dimple for you. Hand clasping. Okay, so if you hold your hands like this, just do it right now without thinking, and then look down at your hands and see which thumb is on top. Is it your right thumb or your left thumb? Okay, for me, it's my right thumb. Uh, but this trait doesn't seem to be correlated with being right or left-handed, so that's kind of interesting. Hair on your fingers. So look, some people, this is a, a trait, uh, most people will have some hairs on the finger knuckle that is down here, but on this one, this knuckle, um, some people have hair there and some people do not. So mark down which one you are. Is your ring finger longer than your index finger? Some people, their index finger, that's like this pointy one, is longer. Um, in some people, the ring finger is longer. So like in mine, in this person, the ring finger and the index finger are the same length. Uh, for me, uh, my ring finger is longer. Okay, and it may be sex linked, which means it may be, the gene for this may be on the sex chromosomes because it's not just uh, sex related characteristics that are on the sex chromosomes. There's some other stuff on there too. So uh, it'll be interesting to count this up. Maybe we'll do that. Liking broccoli. So if you like broccoli, mark this down. Uh, but the foods we like or dislike are often related to what we're familiar with or what you've learned to like or dislike. But some people um, have, they have sensors that, uh, receptors that taste um, a bitter chemical in broccoli much more strongly. So broccoli sort of tastes worse to them. So this can change as you get older, but just mark down if you like broccoli or not. Arm crossing, left over right. So cross your arms just like this. Don't pay attention to it and see which way feels good to you. Is it your left arm on top? Is it your right arm on top? For me, it's my left arm. And then try doing it the other way and see how weird that feels. It feels like sideways to me. Nearsighted. Do you have glasses or do you need to wear glasses? I know, gosh, my, my daughter needs to wear glasses and we haven't taken her yet. Ugh. Anyway, I super need glasses or I would not be able to make it to school. Gap between your front teeth. Do you have, like these famous people, um, a little gap between your front teeth like that that's noticeable where like, uh, you know, it's just air all the way to your gums. It doesn't sound like your teeth are touching. PTC taster. We may do this in class. I think I have some of this paper um, that I got at a conference. Um, so some people have genes, and this is a really clear one where it's one single gene. Uh, that Do you have the gene where you'll be able to taste this chemical? Some people, and it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you or anything. It's just, can you can you taste it or not? Some people can't taste it at all. And some people really can. So uh, I think maybe we'll try this in class. I'm sorry, you guys, if you're a virtual, that you wouldn't be able to do this. Um, I try not to do stuff like that. But if we, I'm asking you to lick something, that's obviously something you have to do uh, in person. Okay? So I hope you got all those things written down, what you were of them, and I will see you next time.